All right. Let's go ahead and get started, guys. Sorry about the little delay here. I uh, trying some new technology, but all is well. Listen, I am Dr. Josh Shields. I'm the owner and founder of Integrative Wellness Centers. We're a functional medicine clinic where basically we help our patients find natural solutions to the health issues. And so I'm so excited today to present to you today how to bulletproof your immune system. And one of the things to understand is we are the experts in helping patients recover and get their health back naturally. Right now, currently in the state of Michigan, we're one of the largest natural functional medicine clinics in, our, in Michigan, as well as across the country where we serve patients in just about every state in the United States. And so we have been down this road a few times, and I really do believe that the information we're going to share with you today is not going to only help you navigate the current pandemic, but hopefully set, the, set you up for a situation where you can have everlasting health and avoid a lot of today's common health issues. This webinar is going to be perfect. Let me take a peek here to make sure we're working. Let's see. Let's see if we're going, if we're live here. So let me go down here. Yeah, it does. Perfect. This webinar is perfect for people that want to avoid disease and illness and who want to be and live their best lives possible. Like I said before, not only in today's situation, but long term, because really health isn't just about what we're going through now. It's about what we're trying to do for the rest of our lives. And this is also perfect for people that suffer from heart disease, who suffer with diabetes, who have sinus or allergy issues, who have asthma or bronchitis, who have autoimmune disease, who have digestive problems, who have frequent illness or infections. And one of the great things that we're gonna share with you today is how all these different conditions I've just listed are all connected. And I think that's one thing you need to understand is that the COVID-19 now, one of the things that we understand is that people that have heart disease, that have diabetes, as well as that have respiratory issues, have immune system issues, that have frequent illness or infections, that have had cancer or have had to go through chemotherapy, these patients are all at a higher risk for the complications of COVID-19. And we're gonna to explain to you today what the connection is with all these different conditions and what it is that when you actually address the root cause of these problems, you'll see that not only do patients improve with, like a lot of times you go to the doctor and they'll see you for your sinus and allergies, but who would ever think by improving your sinus and allergies that it could improve your asthma or can improve your autoimmune condition or can improve your digestive function. And we're gonna talk about that today because unfortunately so many patients I see are going to their doctors and they're simply being put on a medication. If they have sinus issues, they're putting on decongestants. If they have frequent infections, they're being put on antibiotics. If they have digestive problems, they're taking uh, Zantac or uh, Nexium. If they have autoimmune disease, they're giving Humira or Plaquenil. If they're having asthma, they're taking an inhaler. But the problem with all these treatments is they're not really addressing the root cause. And what you're gonna see is with today's epidemic is that it's an immune system issue. And a lot of these health issues that we're talking about here are also related to your immune system. And I'll explain that more as we go into this, I promise. But the first principle that you need to adopt and understand we're gonna go over four main principles today that you need to adopt. And these principles are shifts in your mindset that will need to be made. And these shifts in your mindset will help you navigate your health and improve your health over time if you understand these and adapt these and apply these to your life. But the first principle is that stress causes disease. I know a lot of people believe that inherently that we're given a disease because of our family tree or because of our genetic predispositions. But the truth is, and what we've learned is that over 86% of disease is lifestyle and is lifestyle related is that it's within our control to affect our health and affect our lives. And so let me show you what, what, what I'm talking about here. So this is our, let's say over here on the far left of this graph, this is your health. And if it stays up here, the longer it stays up here, the healthier you are. And ultimately, over time, no matter what, we're going to have a decline in our health to eventually where we end up and we're gonna die. Like this is a normal paradigm, but what's gonna happen is that we have different stressors in our lives that are gonna take us down and gonna move us closer to death. The more stressors that we have, 
physical, emotional, environmental, and biological stresses. The more of these stresses we have, the more our bodies are going to have to adapt. The more adaptation that's required of our bodies, eventually our bodies start to break down. We have organ tissue joint damage, eventually leading to organ failure. A good example of this is the COVID-19. Right now, the stressor of the COVID-19 would be the biological factor of the virus. It enters the body. We're going to have some fever. We're going to have some pains and aches. We're going to have some changes in our physiology, maybe some diarrhea. But ultimately, what we're going to see is if our bodies are healthy enough, we're still in this adaptation phase side of things here, and we can go back and restore back to health. But if we're already in this area here where we already have some organ tissue, organ damage, tissue damage, or joint damage, it's going to eventually lead us to having death. With the COVID, what happens actually is that we develop a disease called pneumonia. And so that's where we flip over from having the symptoms of the disease and actually start to have the actual disease of pneumonia. See, it's not the COVID that kills us, it's the pneumonia. It's the fluids in the lungs that people are drowning, drowning on that's killing them, that's leading to death. Now, I see this all the time in our clinic with patients that, for example, that aren't necessarily going through COVID, but they're going through some type of stressor. They have some type of environmental stressor. They have some type of biological stressor. Uh, for example, like infl inflammation, um, toxicity, nutritional deficiencies, uh, where they have these exposures, these stressors, they start to experience some of these symptoms and in some cases, the doctors will put them on some medications, but ultimately, if they keep going back complaining of the same symptoms, the doctors will tell them, you know what, there's nothing that we can really do right now because everything looks normal on your lab work. And we hear that all the time. People are told all the time that everything is normal, everything that they're going through is completely normal, and they're just going to have to deal with it. And that's just not the truth. The problem with it is that most doctors and most medical clinics are focused on disease. They're going to focus their treatments and their medications on what it is that they can do to treat and manage the disease. And they're trying to prevent people from getting to the death area, but the problem is that they're not trained and don't have the tools necessarily to address how do we look at the physical stressors? How do we look at the emotional stressors, the environmental stressors, the biological stressors that cause the disease in the first place? Like I said before, and that's the first principle, is that all disease has a cause that there's a reason that we are having these troubles. And unfortunately, many of the practitioners out there aren't taught and given the tools to understand how it is that they can help their patients so that they don't have to go through this process. Because we'll see it where a patient, for example, the trigger might be, um, let's say they have a condition called leaky gut or hyperpermeability of the gut. That condition is going to lead to autoimmune disease and where the immune system starts attacking its own tissues. Those autoimmune diseases can be like thyroid disease um, or called Hashimoto's. It can be a neurological disease called multiple sclerosis. We now know that Parkinson's disease has also been associated with autoimmune disease. So now we're starting to have these changes though, and that's where we get the diseases, and that's where the doctor's are really trying to focus on. But before we have these diseases, we have symptoms. We're gonna have achiness. We're gonna have troubles with our memory. We're gonna have some fatigue issues. And those are all signs that our bodies aren't working properly. The problem is, is that we've been taught that we're just to ignore these or just deal with these symptoms. But it's our body saying, I'm trying to adapt to what's happening. Please protect me. Because if we don't address those issues, then that's when the organs become damaged. This is where the patient with the thyroid condition, their immune system's attacking their thyroid. Their thyroid produces less and less hormones over time. And now we have thyroid damage. That thyroid damage becomes so permanent that the patient needs to then be put on thyroid medication to address the issue, but they were never taught what caused the condition in the first place. This is where we see patients with rheumatoid arthritis, where at first they just feel achy and lethargic. And over time though, it starts to develop into permanent joint damage because the immune system and the condition was left untreated for too long and allowed that condition to happen. And so same thing with heart disease. You know, we don't wake up and have a heart attack. We don't wake up and have a stroke. We know that to have these conditions, it takes years. And that's what we're seeing here is that we're going to be pre-symptomatic once these stresses are hit. So we're hit with the bad diet. We're hit with the stress. We're hit with inflammation. And over time, we start to notice our arteries are clogged. And now they call it cardiovascular disease. And then it's treated with medications or surgeries. 
But we can avoid these problems if we start looking upstream here and looking to see what can we do now to improve that. And that's what I love about functional medicine. It's about understanding especially how the environmental and biological stressors of this world have, are going to affect us. Because it's one thing, it's important to understand too, is that right now, our DNA, our genetics have never seen such a massive change in our environments. Like there are more unnatural things now than ever. And so all these unnatural foods, chemicals, the pollutants, everything that we're surrounded in these days, even our drinking water, they have chemicals in them and our bodies are having to respond to that. And with that, we're seeing more and more people starting to have more and more symptoms and more of these types of conditions and chronic health, um, health concerns. And so that's what we're hoping to talk to you guys about today is how is it that we can avoid ending up in this area over here? And what is it that can be involved in that? Because ultimately what we understand with the COVID-19 is that the further you're down here, the more comorbid, more, the comorbidities that you have, the more of those that you have, the more likely you are to die from this disease. So it only makes sense that we don't focus on the disease itself, but we focus on what we can do to bring the body closer over here to the healthier stage. Because ultimately what we're seeing is all too often is too many people are going down this decline too quickly. Our goal is to keep people up here along the top as long as we can, and then maybe the last four or five years of life go down. But too many people these days, I just met with a patient yesterday, she was 26 years of age, she told me she felt like she was 56 because her health had declined so much so rapidly. And that's just not normal. And that's what she's been told is that everything you're going through is normal, just deal with it, you have to put up with it, but there's nothing we can help you with right now because there's no disease. And that's what we wanna get away from is focusing on this and start focusing on what we can do over here to improve these triggers. All right, why is it? All right. Okay, so there's gonna be two types of the immune system. The first type is the um, mucosal immune system and the systemic immune system. These, uh, the, the, the purpose of the mucosal immune system is to keep the bacteria and the viruses and everything that's outside in the world from getting inside of, inside of our bodies. It's also a situation where when we breathe air and when we eat fluids is that's gonna keep these membranes from our mouth to our esophagus, to our trachea, to our digestive systems, keep that outside world from getting into our body unless we want it to get in. And it's also to act as a filtration system. So our skin simply goes into our mouths, down our mouth and our trachea. So it's the same type of tissue that goes from here into our bodies that's basically protecting us at all times. So this mucosal system's job is, is to act as a barrier from the outside world to the inside world. So what we see is here is this is, let's say for example, this is our skin. We have a molecule of parasite or bacteria and typically the response of our immune system on our skin is through the a, a part of our immune system called an IgA. That part of the immune system is gonna help attack the barrier system. But what's, what can happen though is over time, let's say if we cut our finger, that that could lead to those particles leaking in and then triggering our internal bodies to, to fight the infection. That's called the systemic in, uh, immune system. So we have the mucosal immune system, and then we have the inside of our bodies past the barriers of our gut and our digestive system when it gets into our lymphatic tissues and when it gets into our blood set supply where our systemic immune system triggers. We always wanna keep it on the outside as much as possible because once it gets into the inside, that's where the real problems start to happen and all these problems can uh, start to, where the problems can cascade and, and start to grow and, and manifest. And so that leads us to the second principle is that everything matters, everything counts, and everything affects everything. And it's, it's always seemed weird to me that we'll go to a doctor for our nose and our sinus issues and go to a different doctor for our digestive issues. When we really look at the body and how it's connected, it's the same too. It's the same network of tissues. It's the same human body. It always seems weird to me that we go to a neurologist for our one conditions and then we go to a endocrinologist for our hormones, but really the nervous system and the endocrine system work together. That we know that these systems are to interplay with each other and that's what creates health. And that's what I love about functional medicine is that we don't want to look at individual symptoms or individual systems. We want to look at the body as a whole and see that all these body parts and all these systems are working together in harmony because Everything matter, everything counts, and everything affects everything. You can't do one thing to the nervous system and not impact every other system. You can't do one thing to the digestive system and it not impact the nervous system and the hormonal system. And that's what we're gonna talk about today is how all these different systems work together and how we wanna optimize these systems 
and the function of these systems to ensure that your body stays as healthy as possible, not only today, but in the future. Good example of how the systems are interconnected is asthma. We know that common causes of asthma and common triggers are food additives. This is published in WebMD. There's certain foods and food additives, obviously food additives are something that are not natural to our environment, not natural to our body. So when we ingest these foreign, unrecognizable items into our bodies, and many of the foods that we're eating these days are not even, they're, they're what we call franken food. They're not even real food, they're manufactured foods. And so when these foods go into our body, the mucosal immune system is gonna see these things and say, what is this? And it's gonna start a cascade of immune responses. And one of those immune responses that we're seeing now, what science is showing us is that, for example, these food additives and these certain foods can trigger asthma, which is inflammation of the lung tissue. And it can get so bad where people have to use inhalers. Now, obviously these inhalers have helped a lot of people, but at what price? A lot of times these immune inhalers actually lower the immune system. They're also steroids, so they can cause uh, unwanted weight gain as we get older. And so we've got to understand that, yes, the medications can be helpful, but it's more important to find out what's triggering it. And this is a good example of that, where the immune system is being triggered by a particular food or food additive. Here's another one. Pesticides. I mean, guys, think about it. Are, are we more exposed to pesticides and herbicides more than ever? And you've heard about it a lot now on TV. There's all these commercials where people are suing, and the, these lawyers are looking for can, clients that can sue these companies for making these pesticides and herbicides because they've been linked to causing cancer. And that's what this article says, if you read right here, is that these pesticides can affect the immune system and can lead to various types of cancers down here, allergies, autoimmune disease, and infectious disease. So here's a situation where these pesticides, I mean, think about it. How many times have people been wondering, well, I'm, I'm taking all these allergy medications, and maybe it's because they're eating foods that are covered in pesticides that their body's reacting to. Or how many people have autoimmune disease that could maybe be helped and prevented if they reduce their exposure to some of these pesticides? Or if we didn't go out in our grass and roll around, or we didn't drink some of the waters that are being, or that are, that are being polluted with these, these uh, pesticides. And so here it is also is infectious disease. So it can make us more prone to infectious disease. So the more exposure we have to these pesticides, you've got to believe that the more susceptible we are going to be to the COVID-19. Here's another article, talks about a gluten-free diet has reduced thyroid antibody titers. If any of you right now are suffering from thyroid disease or have, or taking thyroid medications, please understand that the number one cause of thyroid disease is an autoimmune disease. And we know that the majority of our immune system is found in our digestive system. So here's a good example when somebody eats gluten, it can cause a trigger in the gut that triggers the immune system to cause the antibodies to go up or if you reduce gluten, we found, and this is found in the, this is in a medical journal, guys, Experimental Clinical, um, Clinical Endocrinology and Diabetes. This was just last year. They found that this can help lower antibodies and can provide benefit for people that suffer with autoimmune disease. But could you imagine having that conversation with an endocrinologist? Hey, I'm thinking about going gluten-free. Do you think that could help? Well, hopefully now that they understand this research, it could help. It's not going to help everybody, but it could absolutely help make an improvement in your health. But it, this is, once again, the example of this is that everything affects everything. Everything is connected to everything and everything matters. And so we can't just disregard something because we, we don't believe it. We have to start looking and investigating, you know, is it possible? And absolutely, that's what we're seeing. Oh. So the key is, is finding the imbalances in the system and solving the puzzle and because every one of us are going to have a unique puzzle to solve and ultimately what i find in my clinic it's not just one piece of the puzzle i always like to say that there's multiple pieces of this puzzle that we need to solve in order to get people to understand to improve their health and to become empowered and and overcoming their health issues and it's never just one piece typically. It's always a lot of these different pieces. So we have to look at all these different types of stressors and understand which one of these are impacting you and which ones are gonna be most beneficial for you as a patient. Because once we solve that piece, once we solve these different pieces, that's when everything comes together.
And that leads us to the third principle is that you need to discover what your needs are. You know, I used to be in the camp of everything can be solved with a good diet and exercise. And I really do believe that if people were to exercise and were to follow a good diet, that would probably avoid about 50% of people suffering needlessly. But the truth is, is that there's a lot of people that are watching this right now that are already following a good diet, that are already doing everything that they believe they should be doing, but they're not getting well. They don't understand why that is. And so then unfortunately we turn to the internet. And when we turn to the internet, we start Googling things. And then when we Google things, we find different supplements that we should be taking. And I know this for a fact because I've done this myself. I remember when I first started suffering with insomnia in 2015, I mean, 2005, I got on Google and Google told me that I had an adrenal stress problem and an adrenal gland problem uh, called adrenal fatigue. And so I started taking these different types of supplements um, like ashwagandha, kava kava. I started taking melatonin, valerian root. I started taking all these different supplements that I read about and all these different adrenal fatigue protocols I started doing, but nothing was working for me. And it wasn't until I finally found a functional medicine practitioner that took me under his wing and did some testing with me. And he showed me what it was that I needed and what I needed to be doing. And he took me on a journey and I remember after two and a half months, and believe me, I was a bit skeptical, skeptical of this protocol because it had nothing to do with my adrenals. Like when he gave me the protocol, I was like, well, there's nothing in here for my adrenal glands. I, everything I have is an adrenal problem, I said. But he told me, just trust me. Just trust me and just trust the process. He goes, if you're not feeling better in two and a half, if you're not feeling better in a month or two, then let's start to question it. And so I went along with it. And I remember after it was actually took me two and a half months, I woke up one morning after having a solid eight hours of sleep. And it was the most amazing moment of my life almost. It was like I woke up and it was like, <gasps> I looked over and there was the alarm clock. And I was like, oh my God, I just slept eight hours. And at that moment, I decided to recommit my life and dedicated my life to dysfunctional medicine because it's changed my life now and it's also changed my wife's life and it's changed thousands of our patients lives now since we've been here in Michigan for eight years and the reason is because we're helping people understand is that it's 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 a not a take this for that mentality it's not oh you have sinus issues take this oh you've got digestive issues take this and that's what the problem with the internet is and that's what's problem what's going on is that so many people out there are just taking supplements even though they're natural and safe but they're taking them they're not really addressing what those person's needs are. And that's really what I love about functional medicine is helping you discover what your needs are. So at that point in my life, I decided to recommit my life and I decided to get, I became certified in functional medicine. And as you can see now in eight years, we've grown a lot and it's because we're doing the right things. We're helping people get to the root cause of the health issues and solve these problems. So I know a lot of you've been waiting for this. The next part is going to be the top three lab tests that you need to have. These lab tests are extremely important to understanding how your body is and where it's at and what you need to be doing for it. Um, obviously, if you were to Google right now what you should be taking to boost your immune system, you're gonna find take zinc, take vitamin T, take vitamin A, take enocysteine, you know, take these different supplements and different products, but the problem is that they're not really what you may need. If you don't need vitamin D, then you don't need to take it. And so that's why it's important to get tested for these types of things. It's also important to understand is that if you're missing any of these nutrients, you're basically sending your immune system into battle without any weapons because these vitamins and minerals are essential to your body functioning properly. Without these vitamins and minerals, you can't function. That's why they're essential. They're essential nutrients to you living and surviving, but they're also essential to your body's immune system functioning. But please understand that, like I said before, everything affects everything, everything matters and everything counts. If you have a magnesium deficiency, even though it's not one of the top immune boosters, if you have a magnesium deficiency, that's going to affect the way that you absorb other vitamins and minerals. That's the way that other, it's going to affect other physiology, ph ph sorry, other physiological functions of your body. So one deficiency can wreak havoc on all the other nutrients, if, even if they are adequate. So it's important to understand is that is to get a good overall view of all of your nutrients. The next blood test that you need to have is called the anti-nuclear antibodies. This test is a good preliminary screening to determine if you have an autoimmune disease. Guys, listen, most patients that come to our clinic, when we tell them that they have autoimmune disease, they don't know it. 
because nobody's ever done the right testing. So here's people that are complaining of all these symptoms and problems, but they're never getting the testing done to determine if they have an autoimmune disease. So what's great about the ANA test is even if you have celiac disease, it's not a celiac disease test, but if, it, if you do have celiac, it's a possibility that ANA might pop up positive and let you know that you could have an autoimmune disease. And it's not very specific. It's more of a general autoimmune test. So it's a great test to just see, do you have antibodies that are attacking your own tissues in your body? And the reason why it's so important to do is because if your body's immune system is always fighting, always attacking something, that it's going to be stressed. And so that in itself is a stress. And then therefore, when you add any more stressors on, it's going to deplete the body even further and make you more susceptible to more problems. And so we want to do that test. Another test you want to run is the thyroid antibodies test. You especially want to run this if you have, an, if you have a thyroid condition currently. If you're taking thyroid medication, you need to get the thyroid antibodies test performed because 90% of thyroid disease is caused from thyroid antibodies, from an autoimmune disease called Hashimoto's. So therefore, if you have a thyroid condition, more than likely, it's gonna be an autoimmune condition. The next test that you wanna run is called a C-reactive protein test. I don't think a lot of you have probably ever heard of C-reactive protein. So let me explain that to you. C-reactive protein is actually a protein released from your liver and its job is to go out to damaged and broken cells and clear them out of the body, to take them and sweep them out. So let me explain that to you. When you have a healthy cell like this, it doesn't need to be carried out of the body. It's not damaged. But as we get older, as we get exposed to free radicals and toxins and stressors, they damage our cells. And when the cells becomes damaged, this cell needs to be carried out of the body. If this cell is not carried out of the body, what can happen is, is that cell can start to accumulate and more cells that accumulate like this can, can become cancerous. And so we know that cancer is largely associated to your immune system. Even if it's a hormone related cancer, we know that those hormones cause the damage to the tissues, but those tissues, if they were carried out by the immune system properly, wouldn't have allowed the body to get the cancer in the first place. So we wanna understand that when we have damaged cells, the more CRP that we're going to have. And one of the things that we've learned now is the more CRP we have, the more disease we have. Look at this Time Life Magazine article. This is a 2004, guys. This is how long I've been using the same slide since 2004, but this is what it's showing us is that inflammation is linked to heart attacks, cancer, Alzheimer's, dementia, you name it, you name a disease, and it's going to have a connection of inflammation to it. And so this is what's so important to understand. Because remember earlier I talked about how I was going to tie in all this together with all these different systems of your body and how they're all connected, how diabetes and uh, autoimmunity and cancer and heart disease, how these are all connected. Well, this is one of the connections. It's called inflammation. Is that when we have inflammation, we're having damaged tissues and organs. So... CRP levels have been consistently shown to be significantly higher in patients that have suffered from H1N1 influenza. These patients, they're going to develop a severe disease outcome. So the higher the, the CRP levels are, the more likely they are to have a severe disease outcome. So I want you to think about this. If, if you enter it, influenza, once again, is, it, this H1N1, is, it has the same responses and it actually kills people almost in the same message, uh, fashion as COVID. It does cause pneumonia quite often. And so it's still, a, it's still very similar. It's not the same. We couldn't find the research to validate the COVID, but understand that the principles are still the same. They're viruses. And so when we have somebody that goes into an infection and they already have inflammation up here, that infection is going to put them up to here, and that's just going to be more than it should be, and that can be, the, the, that can be where the breaking point can be. But if you start and you are here at the lower levels and you get infected, then your inflammation levels go up to here. It's not as dangerous. And so it's so important to understand is that what your inflammation levels are before you get sick are really important. And that's what the study is telling us is that the higher the number goes, the more likely you have the consequences and the bad effects. And this is once again, found in a medical journal, inflammatory research. This is another one, Harvard Health University said that research has shown that 50% of the people that have heart attacks have high LDL. Now I know that you guys are familiar with the, the, the cholesterol and I know that you're familiar with where your levels should be. And you've been told that lowering your cholesterol levels is gonna help prevent a heart, 
heart attack. Well, the research that's coming out now is saying that actually that 50% of people that have heart attacks have normal cholesterol. Their cholesterol levels are normal. But I thought if our cholesterol levels were normal, that we would be protected and we wouldn't have to worry about this. That's just not the truth. The truth is, is that C-reactive proteins were associated with a three times greater risk of heart attack than LDLs. Let me explain to you why that is. If you have an artery, and look back here, let's say these are cholesterol, these cholesterols aren't going to get stuck on these walls of these arteries because there's a huge space for it to go. They only get stuck when the artery is inflamed or damaged, where now these particles can get stuck. And now, yes, the cholesterol is at the scene of the crime. It's at the scene of where the problem is, but it's only there because the inflammation allows it to get stuck to the walls in the first place. Guys, I've seen people with the cholesterol levels over 400, and they have spotless arteries. There's not a drop of cholesterol in, their, in the stuck to the artery, arterial walls, and they live a long life, and they don't have to worry about heart disease. But I've seen people on the conversely, I've seen people that have had cholesterol levels of 120 that have had heart attacks. This explains what we're seeing and why we're seeing it is inflammation is, def, is, is a link, is a culprit to this heart, heart disease, strokes, and those types of problems. So this is why we're seeing people that are, have heart disease are more prone to having complications of the virus because they already have inflammation. That's what led to the heart disease. Now that they have heart disease and they get the infection, they already have their inflammation levels up here. Now they get the infection, now their inflammation levels are up here. Now it turns to pneumonia and it kills them. I hope this is making sense. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm gonna hop on here. If you guys are watching this, if you can make some comments below so I can know you're still here and you can see me, that would help me. Um, let's see. Nobody's saying anything. I did show that some people are watching. Let's see. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so let's continue. You guys enjoying this so far? Give me a, uh, if this is on Facebook, give me a love, give me a, a thumbs up. All right, thank you. Okay, let's go to the next slide. So the next one is CRP was significantly higher in cancer cases than in non-cases. This study was done, I believe it was 83 or 88,000 Koreans, South Koreans. And what they found is they did this CRP test. Now these patients didn't have cancer. They didn't have any uh, history of cancer. If they did, they were excluded from the study. But if they didn't have a history of cancer and they didn't have cancer currently, they were accepted into the study. And what they did is they basically took their CRP levels. And what they found is that if their CRP levels are above three, that within three years, those patients were 150% more likely to develop cancer. That's only after three years. Imagine if you extrapolated this information and this data over six years, over 10 years, what that number would become. And that's because once again, that cancer, that inflammation, that the damaged cells is what cancer is. And so if you're already going into the study and you already have high levels of inflammation, but yet you don't have cancer yet, it can mean that your body's in the process of making cancer or in the process of allowing cancer to occur because the immune system's having a hard time keeping up with all the damage that's occurring. So that's why this test is so important. What's interesting though is if you notice this, if it was just below three, so even a drop from less than three, if it was between one and three, there was only 36% likely. And I love this because in our research, in our clinic, we found that after, out of 51 patients after five months of care, that we saw a 46% reduction in their overall inflammation levels, that we saw them go from a 3.19 to a 1.7. That means we took them from a risk of 150% likely to develop cancer down to 36% likely. So that's what's amazing when you start finding out where and what is causing this inflammation. That's what we're gonna get into next. Food sensitivities. Food sensitivity testing is a critical to find out what's causing and driving inflammation. Let me show you an example of this. This is an IgG blood test. Remember the IgAs is on the surface. Well, the IgGs are once it gets past the surface into the systemic immune system. So now we have the systemic immune system and it's gonna be responding to these foods. The only way it could be responding to these foods in the first place though, is if they got past the mucosal barrier, that they broke through the barrier and got into the systemic system to cause the IgG system to be fired. So this patient has a lot of threes and twos and ones, and every one of these means that their immune system is sparking heavy to these foods. 
The problem with this patient is they had three autoimmune conditions, they had eczema, psoriasis, and lupus. Lupus so bad that they had this butterfly rash on their face, where it looked like they always had blush on their cheeks. Now what's interesting is if as we healed this patient's hyperpermeability of their gut, the leaking of their gut, and got rid of some of the bugs and the parasites, actually this patient had candida, which was a yeast overgrowth in their colon that was Yeast, yeast is much like athlete's foot. If anybody's ever had athlete's foot, they've seen how that athlete's foot can cause cracking of the feet. Well, that yeast can cause cracking and allow these foods to leak into the blood supply and trigger the immune system. And so this patient had a lot of that yeast. And so what we did was we put on her yeast protocol and helped her put on the right products to help the body rid the body of the yeast and it healed the intestines. And this is her four months later, guys. Look, this is the same patient. 1954 is her birth date. This is in 5 13, 2013. This is four months later. Look at that. Isn't that amazing? Please understand that this took work, this took time and this took effort, but because we understood what was causing the hyperpermeability, the leaking of her gut, we were able to address it. But now that these foods aren't being triggered by her immune system, guess what happened to her autoimmune conditions? They went into remission. Now listen guys, we don't treat autoimmune disease in our clinic. All we did for this patient was help them address those stressors on the far left. Remember that graph I showed you earlier of the, of the health and what the triggers were? Disease is to be managed and maintained and treated by medical physicians with medical treatments because they own that category. They own the term psoriasis. They own the term lupus. Therefore, we can't address those issues in our clinic. That's not what we do in the first place. We just wanna look for the triggers, those stressors on the far left that we can't address naturally. So we can address candida. We can address her foods that she's eating, these food sensitivities. We can address her leaking of her gut and helping the, the, perm, the, the permeability of that gut heal up the, the, those junctions in her gut to heal up. As we do those things and we improve her health, a healthy body has less autoimmune disease. You follow me? All right. The next test that's important to understand that you need to have in the last test is a stool test. A stool test is a great measurement of that mucosal immune system. What's that mucosa looking like? What's it dealing with and what's it encountering? And that's what's great about a stool test is because we can look for overgrowth. And this is a study, once again, in the medical journal. And um, it is in, I'm sorry, I can't read it because I got my things in the way here. International Journal of Medical Microbiology. They found that uncontrolled bacterial overgrowth. So if you have just an overgrowth of the bacteria you're supposed to have, it leads to release of large amounts of LPS. Now understand LPS is a, it's called lipopolysaccharide. It's actually a bacteria in your gut. It's actually beneficial to your immune system, that, but only if it stays in your mucosal immune system. But what happens is this overgrowth causes cracking and fissures in the intestines, and it results in that LPS getting into the blood supply and causing a host immune response. It causes an exaggerated immune response. So this is why people, when they're in their 20s, they don't have, or maybe when they're in their teens, they don't have a lot of allergy issues, but as they get older, they get more and more allergy issues. They notice that the pollen this year really starts to exacerbate. They notice they start getting more chronic immune system issues where they start having to take more antibiotics more frequently. And that's because their immune systems are always over firing, over exaggerating because of something like this, of bacterial overgrowth. So bacterial overgrowth has a specific treatment and protocol. It's called dysbiosis. So we want to treat that differently than somebody that might have a parasite or somebody that might have a candida or somebody that might have a fungi. Next slide. This is Annals of New York Academy of Sciences. They found that there's growing evidence that increased intestinal permeability plays pathogenic role in various autoimmune diseases. So they're finding that these tight junctions leads to intestinal permeability if they get too loose and allows these particles to come in, it can trigger autoimmune disease, especially type one diabetes and celiac disease. So once again here, we're seeing where the immune system is affected largely in part because of something that's going on in the intestines. So this is what it looks like, guys. This is what hyperpermeability is, right? Here's your intestines. Uh, here's fecal matter, food, bacteria that leaks into your gut, into your blood supply. Now, these tears occur for several different reasons, and that's a part of the things you need to look at. Zinc deficiencies, vitamin D deficiencies, overgrowth of fungus or yeast, uh, that bacterial overgrowth we just referenced, parasites. We've seen patients with worms. We've actually, some of our patients have sent us pictures of worms that they found in their stools that were this long. Um, but once these particles leak out of your 
gut, out of your digestive system, out of the mucosal immune system right here, which is right here, and it leaks past there and gets into your systemic immune system, we're going to get that response. And when we do, that's when we get systemic inflammation. I always tell people that this leaky gut often feels like, like a low-grade flu. You've woke up in the morning before and you've had the flu or the virus, interesting enough, where you wake up and you're achy, your back aches, your shoulders ache, your, your wrist ache, and you're kind of like something's just not right, but you're not quite sure what's right. That's kind of what it's like to have autoimmune disease all the time. So these people are walking around saying, I just don't feel well. I'm achy, I'm lethargic, I don't feel well, I'm not motivated. And that in large part is because the immune system's always attacking. So it's like they're always on a low grade flu, low grade fever, or low grade, low grade fluid in a sense. We see that these toxins and particles, now that they're in the blood, are going to pass into the blood brain barrier and get into the brain, and they can contribute to brain fog, memory issues, uh, can trigger headaches and migraines. And this is also where they're saying that can be related to Parkinson's or Alzheimer's is that this toxicity that's in our bodies is getting into our brains. So they are connecting the leaky gut, this permeability to those conditions. We know that patients are gonna start having more and more food intolerances where they eat certain foods that they used to, and now they can't. That's what we showed with that one patient with all those tests that were positive on our food sensitivity test. We know that this can trigger autoimmunity because now that the immune system is attacking these particles, the problem is that these particles keep leaking in the immune system keeps attacking, keeps attacking, keeps attacking, and that then in turn, the immune system over responds, it overreacts, and now starts attacking its own tissues, and that's autoimmune disease. We also know that with, the, with this condition, because of the inflammation in the colon here, that the body's not going to absorb the nutrients like it should. See, the nutrients should come in through here and go through the, the cell walls to get dispensed and released into the blood, but if these tears are happening, there's a bunch of inflammation here, those nutrients aren't gonna be absorbed properly. So now we start getting nutritional deficiencies that are critical for the function of our other tissues. So people go to the doctors and say, well, you're low in zinc. Well, I'm low in zinc, I eat, I eat a good diet, I eat healthy. Well, part of that can be because you have inflammation. And the problem with a lot of these immune system issues, and I mean, these gut issues, is you don't ever know you're in habit. There's not a lot of pain receptors on the cell walls of our mucosa especially in our digestive system. So we can have a raging infection. You have no idea. You might have some bloating or gas occasionally, some changes in your stools. But in some cases, some people don't have no clue what's going on in their intestines. That's why we do the testing. This is a good example of, of, of overgrowth of somebody's stool. Uh, this is a dysbiotic overgrowth. We also see down here where these are certain bacteria that have been linked and science has shown us that these are specific autoimmune triggers. So, What's interesting is another article found that, and this was in Diabetes Journal, 2007, they said diabetes and obesity are two metabolic diseases characterized by insulin resistance, which diabetes is an insulin resistance problem, but they also say low-grade inflammation. And I want you guys to think about this, is, is typically diabetes is associated with elevated blood sugars, right? Well, if we have elevated blood sugars, that means we have more toxins more debris and waste in our blood than we should, and that's going into in itself cause damage to the cells. So yeah, you're, if you have diabetes, you're going to have typically more inflammation because the disease itself is more toxic to the body. It's more damaging to the body. So that CRP is gonna go up to try to clear all those toxins out. But then what they're finding though, is that when they took that LPS, that bacteria I told you earlier, from the colon and they, and they inject it into a rat, it caused the rat to have hyperglycemia, where it had too much blood sugar. It caused the rat's insulin levels to go up, and it caused a whole body liver and adipose tissue weight gain. So let me show you that picture of this. this is, I think a picture is worth a thousand words. So here it is. This rat and this rat had the same amount of activity on a daily basis. They, were, they also ingested the same amount of calories. And what's great about these studies is that you can control everything that these rats do. So these mice had the same exact diet, same exact amount of activity, yet one rat was overweight and one wasn't. And the only difference was they injected this rat with that toxin. That toxin led to inflammation. Inflammation leads to slow metabolism. Make sense? All right. Next one, metabolic endotoxemia. This was published in Gynecological Endocrinology. Once again, a medical journal, and they found that the bacterial endotoxins that leak from the gut, right here, the translocation, that means the, the displacement, the movement of these bacterias from the gut 
into circulation has the potential to interfere with progesterone production and result in luteal deficiency. <laughs> Say what? What this means, guys, is that your gut, if it's leaking these toxins out of the gut into the blood, it's going to shut down your progesterone production. And what happens when you have a progesterone deficiency? You're going to have problematic cycles. You're going to have long cycles, heavy cycles. You're going to have a lot of PMS, a lot of cramping. You're going to have troubles with fertility issues. And yes, these issues can be connected to your gut. Now imagine going to your OB guy and say, hey, I think I might have a gut issue causing my hormonal issues. They're going to look at you like you're crazy. Not all of them, but some of them. We have had a couple doctors in town here, or we've had one doctor, an OB guy, and his wife come to our office, and they came to watch us because they're implementing functional medicine into their practice as well, because they understand that hormones aren't the answer for everybody's problems, that you have to find out what's causing the hormonal balance in the first place. And this is just one example. And the reason I showed you this is because it ties in perfectly to this next story on this patient, where she came into our office. I, you know what? I'll just let you guys hear her story from her. Turn up your microphones just in case you can't hear. Uh oh. 18. Um, my health has improved tremendously. Um, all of my issues that I brought to Dr. Perez has been rectified. Um, I am able to concentrate at work. I'm more focused, more productive. Um, I can actually sleep now. Um, that is amazing. It feels good to be rested and to actually have energy to do what you need to do. Um, I also find that my memory has gotten 100% better. Um, aside from that, um, I no longer have issues with my sinus. It, previously, it was pretty chronic. I would get infections all the time. Um, but now I have not had any issues with my sinuses. Um, apart from that, my digestion is amazing. Um, I actually receive my menses every month now, so that's been regulated. Um, and the bonus to it all is I've lost 48 pounds. So that's just a bonus. <laughs> it's definitely not my primary concern or focus, but that was just something that happened and I appreciate it. All right, I hope that makes sense. And I hope, it's, it, if you think about it, it's pretty amazing that here's a patient that's suffering with sinus issues, so you can take sinus medications. She has digestive issues, so she can take some digestive medications. She's got some issues with her hormones, so she can take some hormone issues. Or she can get on Google, right? She can go to Google and Google can say, well, for your sinuses, take this, for your digestion, take this, and for your um, hormones, take this. But the thing is, guys, we didn't give her any supplements for her, her sinuses. We didn't give her any supplements for her hormones. We gave her supplements that were for her and for what her body needed. When you give the body, like I said earlier, the missing pieces and help address what's happening, the body's going to get well and respond and get healthier when you remove those stressors. As you remove those stressors, the body goes back up the curve, gets to healthier. Not because we're treating individual symptoms, but we're treating individuals. The fourth principle is that nothing replaces proper care and testing. Okay, guys, this is so important to understand. I actually got this from one of our patients out of her testimonial. She said, almost word for word this, you need to find out what it is that's wrong. You need someone to show you how to fix it and to provide you the proper guidance and accountability to actually do it. And that's the big difference here, guys, is that it's easy to go online and try to figure out and diagnose yourself and take some supplements. But the problem is that doesn't usually work. And it's kind of weird to me, and I, I guess it's not weird to me because I did it myself, but like if we had a problem with our car and the, and the electrical system, like we would never attempt to try to fix that ourselves. But yet, because we have the resources now available to us, it's one of the first things we do. We like to just get in there and figure out what we can do ourselves. But in this situation, it just makes sense to me that when we're dealing with your health, that you work with an expert, somebody that's done it thousands of times that has helped thousands of patients because you're more likely to get the results that you're looking for versus just guessing and going at it. Because I can tell you, I suffered for over two years with my problem before I was able to finally put aside my ego and allow somebody to try to help me. So I understand where it's coming from, but what's interesting is it's not just the supplements that we give, it's, it's not just the testing, but it's the actual care that you receive that makes the difference. You know, so often today in the healthcare system, the care has been removed. 
that it's more about what they're pushing on their computer, what the code is, what the diagnosis is, getting the right billing. But nobody's there really listening. Nobody's really there engaged with you. Nobody's there as a relationship with you. Like some people, I've, I've, I've had some patients, I said, who's your primary doctor? They said, well, I've never actually met them. I just met the nurse, but my PCP is this per person. They never met their doctors because it's being pushed down to people that are in a lower pay scale so they can keep their profit margins higher. And that's just not what we do. And that's not how we care for people, guys. We provide care directly from a doctor one-on-one -on -one, to give you the support and the guidance you need through this journey. So for those of you that have been watching this, you're like, you know what, I think I'd like to do this. I'd like to see if I can improve my health. I'd like to see if you can help me overcome some of my issues. So what can I do? For everybody else, if you're not interested, you can, you can check out now, but this is a good time for those of you that would like some help and you'd like some guidance, let me explain to you how this works. The first step is a, to schedule a, a consultation and it's gonna be a virtual consultation. Like I said before, we're, we're now in most of the United States, it's Hawaii, Rhode Island, New York, and New Jersey that we're not accepting patients from, but everywhere else in the country we're taking patients. The first step, we'll schedule one of these consultations with us. We'll sit down with you, myself or one of my doctors, and we'll sit down with you and let you know if we can accept your case. What does that mean? That means, do we think we can really help you? And are you in the right place? Because sometimes it's not the right time. It's not the right place for people to be. And we do have to refer them out. If we do think we can help you, then we're going to ask you also a series of questions that determines if you're willing and able to do what it's going to take for us to actually help you. Because I want to make sure that if you're going to go through this and spend your money and spend your time, that it's going to be something that's actually going to benefit you. The next thing that we're going to do after we let you know if we can accept you is we're going to recommend your lab testing. We're going to say, you know, let's do a stool test. Let's do a food sensitivity test. Let's do a comprehensive blood test. Let's do that ANA. Let's look at that CRP. Let's look at your iron levels, your ferritin, your store, your magnesium, all these different markers we're going to talk about. But each patient that, that we're going to meet with is going to have different recommendations, potentially based on what their needs are in our conversation and what their goals are. The next part is we're gonna outline for you your frequency of care and your length of care. Some patients might see us once every two weeks. Some patients might see us once a month. But typically we see our patients for about six months initially for their initial intensive care. We like to say that during that time frame, we're trying to get as many of those pieces of the puzzle put together as much as we possibly can. And then from there, we'll see our patients two to three times a year. But initial intensive care is gonna be about six months. And then we'll let you know expected cost. That cost is gonna include your your care, your supplements, your estimated amount for supplements, as well as the testing. So we're gonna put everything together for you so you know what it's gonna take, and we'll go through those options. This is for people, and these are the people that should schedule, if they're, and the people that should be scheduling are the people that this is, their health is their top priority. The truth is, is that all too often, our health is probably the, the fourth or fifth thing down on our list. It's really not that important. It's not one of our priorities. And honestly, if you're going to spend your time and energy and resources with us, you're going to want really great results and you're going to expect great results. And for that to happen, you're going to have to give yourself 100% commitment. You need to make your health the top priority item in your life because ultimately without your health, you're, you can't be there for others that require you to be there. And so we want you to focus and be 100% committed to your health and take this serious. And that leads us to the next step is, this is only for people that want a comprehensive step-by-step -step process, okay? We have a process that works. We have a formula that generates and helps people get their lives back and empowers them on what it is they need to do to get well. But we do not have a way of, you can't come into our office and we can't just Guess, like you can't come into my clinic and go, you know what, I think you should do this or take that and try this. And you know what, take this and let's see in six months. That's just not healthcare in my opinion. There's a lot of people out there, a lot of doctors out there that are doing that for people. They're giving them a handful of supplements and checking in with them six months. But health is a journey and it's a process and healing's a process. And so what we start our patients with and what they finish with there's going to be two different things. We don't have one set of protocols we put people on. We have to change the protocols based as we're seeing their body heal and as we see them respond. Okay. And this is not going to be for people though also that are looking for a quick fix, looking for a magical pill. And this isn't for people that are not willing to take their health hundred percent serious and really commit to this. And you know who you are if you're serious or if you're not. Out of one other thing too with our care, I really am proud of is that it's not just 
the, the, you might be coming to us because you have an issue with say your digestive system. What we found is that when we improve one system, it affects every other system. Like I mentioned earlier, everything affects everything. So when we help a body get healthier, we see that they have, this is what we found out of 51 of our patients that were under care for five months is that 69% had improvement in their memory and focus. I'm sorry, 69% improvement in their memory and focus. That our overall patients had a 67% improvement in their energy levels, that a 60% improvement in their sleep. On that lab test I already mentioned to you earlier, they had a 46% reduction in their inflammation, they had a 76% improvement in their digestive health, and a 67% improvement in their anxiety and depression. And it's because we're helping the patients to identify their needs and as their body gets healthier, they go back up that scale and they have less and less symptoms. And they get back to that adaptive phase instead of having the reactive reaction phase. The top objections to why people sometimes don't why they come to us or don't come to us is that insurance doesn't cover this. I'll go ahead and read it for you. But Medicare says that this is out of the Medicare guidelines. Care that seeks to prevent disease, promote health, and prolong and enhance the quality of life is not considered medically necessary. <laughs> You're like, hang on, isn't that why I have insurance? I want to enhance the quality of my life and I want to prolong it. But see, guys, you have to understand in medical insurance, and this is a lot of other companies have adopted these exact same guidelines. I know you say, well, my insurance covers preventative health. No, it doesn't. It pays for early detection. A colonoscopy is early detection. A, a mammogram is early detection. It's looking for the disease. It's not looking to prevent disease. We know that medical care, I mean, medical insurance is designed to pay for medical care. And you've already received medical care your entire life. And if you're watching this right now, it's probably because it's not working that well. Yes, it has a place. And yes, it has a purpose. And yes, I will use it if I have to. But it's going to be the last thing that I do because I want to make sure I'm doing everything I can on the left side of that curve. I want to address those, those stressors to ensure that my body doesn't move down that road as quickly as a lot of people have. And so this just isn't covered by your insurance. And that leads to people's next objection. Well, how much is it? Well, it's not cheap. You know, with the testing and the care and the supplements and everything that we're going to be giving you, there's a lot of pieces to this puzzle that are going to come into play. But the great thing about it is that that consultation is a no obligation consultation. We're going to sit down with you and find out what your goals are. We're going to find out if we can help you. and We're going to map everything out for you. And we don't expect you to move forward if we can't find a payment that works for you. Okay. But ultimately, it's going to be cheaper than what most people pay for their health insurance these days. And the thing is with health insurance is you pay it year after year after year and you get no real benefit from it. So, and it's not cheap to be unhealthy. You know, it's not cheap to not feel the way, to feel the way that a lot of you feel and to miss the amount of work that you miss and to miss the amount of time with your family. A lot of these things are priceless, a lot of people would say. So I can assure you that it's one of the best investments you'll ever make for yourself. And the last one is that it takes work. Like I said before, is a lot of people aren't gonna be wanting to do this because it takes time, it takes commitment, it takes energy and it takes effort but you're worth it. You know, you have been put on this earth to live the best life possible and taking care of your life and taking care of your health. It takes work. And anybody that tells you it doesn't take work, it doesn't take commitment is lying to you in the wrong. It definitely takes a focus and you have to work on it. So for those of you today that have decided to schedule, I want to give you this opportunity to schedule today. Uh, we're going to put a link below. If you decide to schedule today, we're going to give you $100 to use towards your first visit recommendations, whatever the doctors or whatever I recommend for you, we're going to give you $100 to use towards your care. This is only good for those people that want that, that let us know by putting it on in the link. There's going to be a place in there you're going to put that you saw us from the uh, Bulletproof Your Immune System webinar. Put a note in there. And actually, you know what? I'm going to stop sharing this slide and I'm going to show you where to go. Actually, you know what, I'm just going to put it in the link and I'll have a link included. So never mind that. But yeah, there's definitely a, a place you'll want to go. And then that link in the, in the message in the subject line, just put, hey, I found you from the Bulletproof uh, webinar. Can I uh, please have uh, the $100 discount towards my first visit? All right, guys, fill out that information. We'll get back to you as soon as we possibly can and schedule you for your first appointment. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned a lot. And please feel free, free to share it with any of your family and friends so that they can know the truth too as well. Take care.